Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Ken Plume from KenPlume.com and feeling really bad that I didn't make mine dot fun. Hmm. There's still a chance. Yeah, you no, kind of have to still do a it, chance. Right, Pete? Dot fun. No, you, have to, you have to choose fun from the beginning. I don't think mm, you can true. bring fun to the party later. Fun chooses you, really. Mm. That's the... Uh, um, well, yeah, thanks again, uh, Ken, for coming back for minute 24. Happy to 24 do so. of Solo, a Star Wars party. It starts with the beast yanking Corporal Solo off the pole. You know what I mean? And it ends with Beckett and his crew leaving Corporal Solo and his new friend behind on the muddy m- mists of Mimban. <laughs> the muddy mists of Mimbam. Hmm. Um, so, last scene first. Let's upend this. Um, what? The f- <laughs> there, I, I know we say it ends with uh, Beck and his crew leaving Solo and, and, and the Beast behind. Um, but there's actually a scene filmed here. This would go in between this minute and the next minute. Oh, sorry. Written. Multiple drafts of the script never filmed because, mm. therefore, it's not in the cut scenes. But um, there was a scene where they actually do leave them behind. Beckett and his crew take off, and right when they're getting here, they see them leave. And uh, then, in order to catch up with them, they, uh, the, the Corporal Solo and the Beast steal a garbage scow, and uh, they fly there at one point they fly over a bunch of the stormtroopers who are chasing them and dump a bunch of garbage on their heads <laughs> and it so that went through lots of that made it through multiple rounds and then finally like i guess a a okay how are we going to film this kind of a thing as they were looking through it they're like oh you know what that isn't that great and it would be expensive because we need a bunch of extras and we need to dump garbage on them and all this other stuff <laughs> and so um I like no. the, uh, uh, Ken, I don't know if you were aware, but earlier there was a, a scene cut where Han and uh, Kira were supposed to hide in a bucket of eels. Yes. I've and seen I scene. love this almost like alternate gross out version of the movie where it involves people like being in eels and getting garbage dumped on them. It's a, it's a totally different tone to the whole thing. Yeah. I, I, I think they should have added that in too, that like, Right before they dump the garbage, Han's like, wait a minute. And he pulls out another eel and throws it in the garbage. <laughs> and then they dump that on them. <laughs> that should have been the whole film. Just every right. scene, he pulls every another eel out. And pulls out an eel. Yeah. Or like shakes his pant leg and <laughs> <laughs> flopping around. Still alive, of course. Why yeah. did it have to be eels? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, the, that was part of the eel. Han's reluctance to get in the barrel of eels is supposed to basically hearken yeah. to. He had a bad eeling. As, he had a bad uh, eeling yeah. about that. <laughs> Well, speaking of Han Solo catchphrases, this minute he says, trust me, mm. which is, isn't that a Han Solo thing? Doesn't he say that? That is. Or is that more of an Indiana Jones thing? Uh, it's all of the above, I think. Does Indy say trust me? I don't know. Have we ever seen a movie with Harrison Ford in it? Any of us? I think he says it in. Um... Does, he, does he say it in Witness? <laughs> <laughs> he used to say it in Return of the Jedi. But now he doesn't. Yeah. Huh. Now I'm trying to think of it. Maybe they're 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 actively taking out uh, all the all the occurrences of him saying trust me. Maybe they're deleting them. They're uh, actively Mandelaing you. Oh damn! They're creating they're... trust issues. Mm, there you go. <laughs> uh, let me see. Han Solo. Trust me. Um. I, I, the only one that leaps to mind is uh, C-3PO commanding Chewie to trust uh, Lando, but I can't think of mm. times, actually, that Han Solo or Indiana Jones says trust me. But again, I might be getting a transmission from someone who's listening to this, and they're currently yelling at us as they uh, walk but their dog. It definitely, I mean, it was, you know, it's the, it, famously, I don't want to say famously, but but interestingly, like, it was one of the lines that was replaced in Return of the Jedi. Huh. Um. But because um, they knew he was going to use it in solo eventually, right? So they, they basically. Solo. But I think they, they would do quota. the opposite, right? They'd want to set it up. The, yeah. the whole trust thing. Yeah. Um. 
Oh, does he say it when he's shooting um when he's uh in Return of the Jedi where he's hanging upside down oh, and he's trying to, to shoot Lando. That's what I'm saying. They, that's they edited that out. Oh, so he did say trust me, and that was the scene where they, they edited Lando it. Lando says, Yeah, I thought you were blind, and he says, Don't worry, trust me. Now oh. he says, like, all right, I can see a lot better. Oh, that is that's been Mandela. <laughs> George George Lucas totally changed. That's the McClunky of uh of of edits right there. Uh, when I when I search for Han Solo, trust me, the mm. other one has come up is a quote from later in Solo, a Star Wars party. So mm. he's quoting himself later. Well, that's a good bit of characterization then, because it definitely feels like a Han Solo thing to say, even right. if yeah. he never actually does say it. Right. So. Isn't that in the Kira scene that he says, "Trust me"? Uh, Towards and, the end, in the well, we'll find out. I don't know. <laughs> I just read it, but I don't know. <laughs> So here's put in, something. Put it in um, your notes. When uh, Han explains to Chewbacca and he says, oh, I got some friends. We got we to gotta go meet them over there at the airfield. Hmm. Should it be space field? Hmm. Star field? No. Well, I mean, star field's in the sky. Because. With um, Because they're, they're, those haulers are taking ships through the air. They're there to pick up AT-ATs and ATSTs and bring them through the air for the, to the, for the land the battlefield. Battle. Yeah. So they're they're mainly flying around in the air. So they they would have an airfield and then from they they come from space to the airfield and then from the airfield they take off to go do other things. Uh, maybe, maybe the more combat. Star Warsy terminology would have been like landing zone. Hmm. That would have wouldn't have stuck out to you as much as being weirdly out of place well i don't know if it was weirdly out of place i, I i'm sure if i wasn't watching it just it didn't minute, sound star wars minute by you. minute i'm sure i would not have noticed You're like this it is at this all. is more real world <laughs> war film to me to hear yeah airfield. It, airfield. Does, airfield it definitely does sound more serious to say airfield as opposed to space field which sounds like science fictiony yeah. over at the ship spot <laughs> <laughs> he should have said it in shirawak so it would have been like over at the you know flying box house <laughs> whatever <laughs> me and you fight freak what is it pretend make pretend right. war <laughs> the battle of pretend battle of pretend yeah you and i freedom make by secret battle of pretend um speaking of pretending um mm. we are introduced to uh rio in this minute who is pretending to be an imperial officer oh what you're getting well, I, want, I wanted to back up to ask because when they first run out and we got that comedy of them going two different ways Correct. yeah we see where where Han Solo, Corporal Solo, wants to go, and where we end up going. Where was uh, the beast going? Um, back to the comedy club. He was, yeah, he go, was going to go get his guarantee. He was going back to eat those stormtroopers. No, he wasn't running the right. Run. <laughs> he was running to his his uh, castle. Maybe it was an, maybe it was an France, improv troupe. His, maybe with... he was part of a Wookiee improv troupe. Hmm. Uh, I my assumption was that uh, maybe when he was originally thrown in here, like maybe perhaps he had a ship or a vehicle, or he saw a ship or a vehicle, and then Al he's like, if, "If I get out, that's what I know I'm going to run where that I used to. I saw those ships before I was thrown in here, so maybe." Mm -hmm. I Although steal them. part of the pre, I mean, or the legends or the the tale is that uh, Chewbacca at one point had been enslaved by the Empire, so maybe he was part of a work group. That was part of this ground invasion, and his misbehavior had gotten him placed in this pit. Maybe he was off to look for the other, or free mm. the other Wookiees that were enslaved as part of this ground invasion. Wait, that happens later, though. What? 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 Right, right? Doesn't it? Doesn't it, don't we free Wookiees again yeah. later? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but there are but there yeah, but there are enslaved Wookiees all over the place. Right. I'm assuming at this. No, you're point. only allowed to do it once. We're not here to free sleep. <laughs> well, we, well, just the fact remains, we don't know how Chewbacca got it. We don't know if he was got lost, part of a convoy or something, or... or I do uh, like the idea of his car still parked in the mud on Mimban and like for like 200 years. It's like, can we just stop there? Like, <laughs> maybe maybe it was like the equivalent of a flat tire <laughs> that got him stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was hitchhiking. <laughs> it's the best hitchhiker in the galaxy. I got to get back to my ride. So Rio, can we move on to Rio? Yes, his name is Rio. His name and is he's Rio. Off and his he... clothes. <laughs> his name is Rio, and he's taking off his clothes. Uh, so how do we feel about Rio in general? Pro con? I would. I I think he looks really cool. I do like the design of him. 
Mm-hmm. I love the multi arm thing, which uh, this now that we have CGI, we can really do like a multi arm character and have it really, mm-hmm. you know, work. Uh, I am definitely not a fan of uh, not. I don't know. I don't care for John Favreau in the role, and I feel like he suffers from disembo- disembodied voice uh, syndrome. That, that syndrome doesn't where fit. It doesn't seem like like that character. They're in a ship that is flying, and he's talking in a tone that you'd be like, it should be at least as loud as like an airplane, and I don't know. He just sounds like he's talking in a in a little recording booth, you know. Without, right. Uh, it sounds like a poor mix, is what you're saying. Exactly. So, um, but yeah. I feel like Leo is a fault. character. I think, and I think he's funny, <laughs> and I think he's a cool design. So overall, I'm going to go thumbs up. I think he's probably the best sequel alien. Hmm. I know this is technically a prequel, but definitely the best. I think he's the most of the of the al- They have not done a lot of main inner alien characters. They tend to be kind of. I mean, he doesn't last very long, but... Um, no, because the most we got in Rogue One that wasn't human was just K2SO, right? Yeah, we've, they've done droids. I guess Maz, but... I, I think Rio's yeah. the, the most dynamic character and kind of... Hmm. I, I really wish that they had had it, Rio, like an alien like Rio, as part of the Ray. Although I guess the child, Finn, Grogu, oh. also fits into that whole... yeah. But he's very, he's just very. And I don't see like, Rio dolls. Oh, no, no, no. I, that's what I was just, there, apparently there was a Black Series six inch Rio action figure, but. Mm. Did they make one? It seems like it. Mm. They made a Rio. You, you know, our Star Wars minutes always come back to this as t- our that's discussion toys, of, yeah. did they actually make <laughs> that character that they should have? That's why I have a Saw Gerrera that I bought just based av- over our conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at this. Yeah, here we go. So now Star we need Wars. to get a Rio. Oh, they they made Val L three three seven. Yeah, Enfys Nest with a swoop bike. They did make. They make all the. I think they're all these the, the six inch. That's the problem. They don't make three and three you quarter. Like, you mean like him? Oh yeah, there you go. Um. So oh look at that. Oh. Alex, did you know they make a a Jawa with Suga? Oh no! I, uh, that's it's the only red-eyed Jawa holding holding. Yeah. No, oh, okay. But is there a Lady Proxima bathtub set? <laughs> totally should be. She squirts water out of her mouth. <laughs> uh, with bre- uh, with breakaway skylight. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm uh, interested because there is a there's a scene here with what somebody wearing what looks to be a latex Rio mask. So maybe there was like a body. Double an onset. An well, onset. They did the, well, they did that for Rocket. I mean, Sean yeah, that's Gunn true. Was famously on set for. But, but was he just as himself though, or was he wearing a little? I think. I think hat? he 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 was there for blocking. Katie Cartwheel was the performer for Rio. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, we discussed that. She was like a yes. On like, set. Yeah, she was like yes. Uh, you mentioned that already. There you go. Yeah, this must be her. This is Katie Katie uh, Cartwheel. Also, the actress who did. Uh, uh, Quill, is it Quill? Who is the uh, oh, not in? Oh yeah, Quill. In uh, the Quill Nolte. Yeah, yeah. Is she also the actress who did that on set? I don't know. I could be. I guess we would. We would probably would been, be better. Would have been to around that. the same time, right? That could have rolled off one project to the next, filming the first season of Mandalorian. <clears throat> I'm sure I'm they have at... a. A stable of. I think she also did the frog person. lady whose whose eggs were being oh, yeah, eaten by yeah. Grogu. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a question. Um, yes. What are some of your favorite multi armed characters in Star Wars, both droid oh, and Star alien, Wars. and just in Star Wars? We can mm-hmm. we can branch out if you want, but oh, we're gonna have to go to that chef droid in Book of Boba Fett, right? The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got Treadwell, Chef Gourmand. Yeah, the pancake Grievous. Droid. Well, no, Grievous doesn't. Well, I mean, that's a multi arm character. You didn't say droid yeah. specific. No, no, I said just alien or so. alien. Yeah. Dexter. Dexter Jetster, probably the mm. most speaking lines of any multi armed alien up until now. Mm. Um, who you, who made the best use of their multi arms? Does Dexter have more lines than Chef Grimond? Oh, yeah. Well, he has an entire scene. Well, like, so literally, ha- this whip stir, beat whip stir are like half of his, di- ever like half right. of his lines. So. It's funny they're both chefs, though. Yeah. <laughs> so is the oh, pancake man, that, droid. 
So well, I guess um, it's coming come in handy. I feel like Rio has to qualify as the most, probably the best articulated one, because I feel like he does, you know, when he's driving the ship, his arms are always moving and doing stuff. So Right. Um, but it's also that uh, alien, I don't remember uh, the alien's name, but it's the one with like the watermelon head and the gas mask in the cantina. Oh, yeah. That's uh, a multi- multi- Nebrin Leeds. Maybe is that uh, from the Daily Bugle? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, does R two technically count as a multi armed droid? <clears throat> FX seven and the FX droids. Sure. FX seven and the FXs. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the band. The FX seven. What about outside um, of what about outside of uh, Star Wars? What are your favorite multi armed characters? Um. For the sheer uh, gall of it, I do like. Um, I can't remember if it was was it Young Blood or something like that, where the Rob Liefeld had a character called Forearm who had four arms. That was his. That, that, his that power sounds was like that sounds like Young Blood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wasn't there a was there a scene in the Book of Boba Fett where he fought a multi armed creature? Oh yeah, the stop motion, the Ray oh, Harryhausen right, yeah. creature. Okay, so they did do that. It was like a Mars kind of like. Yeah. What What was the name? Oh yeah, that, I don't remember of that. Yeah, the monster that he fought with the not. with the Tuscan child. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a multi armed oh, forearm was in. Uh, um, he was not. He was in New Mutants. It, it was in New Mutants. Yeah, it was when you say when, Newtons. With Fig New he Mutants. Was, <laughs> he was in. He was in Um, Newtons. Yeah, he was in the Mutant Liberation Front, and then eventually, I, apparently, people used him. You mean the one that was was led by Strife? That's the one. <laughs> um, That's the one. Bad. I feel bad for remembering that. Yeah. Other people apparently took him over and made him look uh, a little bit better. You I guess mean anatomically so. correct. But As uh, you can still, with yeah. a forearm. Forearm. A guy named Forearm and his. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go with Spider Man. Spider Man when he oh, mutated. Sure. Yeah. Six arm yeah. Spider Man. Yeah. Although you did make me think of uh, uh, Doc yeah, Ock. One... Doc Ock's my favorite Spider Man villain. He's a multi armed mm. guy. Yeah, but but are those organic to him? Would, would that would be? We're allowing uh, Grievous, I mean... so it's a yeah. True. It's part of his shtick. So yeah, I'll allow it. I'll uh... allow myself to like. <laughs> <laughs> um... Sounds like a, it sounds like a lot of things slide under that rule. <laughs> I am both a uh, stern and easygoing taskmaster. It is true. <laughs> I do, I think, have to say, uh, now that, since you mentioned that creature being like from Mars, I'm like, I, I do have to, you know, give at least a tip of the hat to Tars Tarkas from uh, the John Carter. Hunter? John oh. Carter, the Princess yeah. of Mars, uh, you know, the, the Edgar Rice Burroughs, John, John Carter books. But not the film. Not the film. I, I need to re I need to go back and watch the film again because I, I want it to be I want I always want it to be good because it's Don't got a good this. source material and it's 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 like a like an all star game of the golden age of television, but it's a slippery slope. Then you're rewatching Lone Ranger and you're, you're just I've never you're seen going... Lone Ranger, so I don't 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 just I'm not as I... I'm not as attached to Lone Ranger as I am the Mars uh, the yeah. Barsoom. I saga. remember thinking it was I don't know why it tanked, because I mean I'm not saying it's the greatest film of all time, but like I don't know why. Yeah, it wasn't like worse than a lot of other junky things. movies that make it to like I saw it and was like, oh, that was a lot of fun, and so I don't know why it was. Uh, I don't know what the deal was. Why people mm. stayed away. I think it was also one of those ones that was released during the era of really bad 3D. Hmm. That could be true. And that uh, one of those dark and muddy 3D conversions that right. sort of turned people off. Yeah. So maybe it was a. Uh, and it was it was not something that was sold terribly well to people. Well, yeah, just As calling it John was. Carter. Yeah, it was, it was a mistake to begin with. Should have been so. called Mars Attacks too. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is Han and uh, Ch- Han and the Beast um, mm-hmm. are on the ground. You're and listening waving. to 10:40 a.m. with Han and the Beast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it uh, it seems unlikely, but I'll. Guess so. I'll go along with it that uh, they would be able to recognize Han and the Beast as they were driving away, and there's these two shadowy figures on the battlefield waving to the. Why would they not assume it was like Imperial saying, "Hey, come back here! You're stealing our ship." You know what I, I mean? Like, I I do want to note that that I think for some reason that mm-hmm. is the most impressive shot to me is Beckett's ship 
coming out of the mist and flying uh-huh. over them. Something about how that shot is composed uh-huh. is one of the few shots that shows like the immensity of a ship like that flying over mm-hmm. and feels about as real as you can get. Something yep. about that shot stuck out at me is like, I love the composition of that. Like all the elements of that came together as it emerges and flies over them. Mm-hmm. Right. Just a shot to point. I just wanted to point out. Yeah, no, pretty, I, yeah. pretty shot. I, we should, We have plenty of room for pointing out the things that we like. Yeah. Which I, I in theory, there's a lot of it here. I don't, I don't, I like, you know, we, I we like that pretty too, shot. But I like, the, I like, I like that pretty shot. That's I it. like that pretty shot. Oh, speaking of, I like that. I like that Wookiee, <laughs> um, which is something I say more often. That's I, I quote Maz saying, I like that Wookiee all the time. But here, uh, uh, Rio, this is what we were, started to talk about it yesterday. That Rio's was like, hey, I'm not Wookiee. Wookiee. All right. I like that. Like, cool. Wookiee, Wookiee, crisp. Same thing. Same, same. Do you think he says cool Stress. crisp the same way? Well, yeah. Well, the, I guess I guess I also like thing. that it it it, um, it plays on the um, Han Han Sabak Sabak. It's almost like they're creating their own version of that of that. Right. Well, it, well, it's the same. I don't know if you mentioned it before, but it's one of those things like when you're a kid and you haven't heard a character name pronounced before. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And you just get in your head whatever the pronunciation to you it is, and yeah. then eventually you hear someone else say it, but it's already ingrained. Although it sounds like he's met them before, he he implies that he's slept in the lap of one. So maybe we the maybe he we've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe Wookie is the way lovers say it. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's more informal, or you know, it's a regional di- regional accent. You know, perhaps you've you know, never been wooed yeah, by Wookie. a Wookie. The way people in the Midwest say rough, like, oh, he's up on the roof. Oh, right. Like, you know, like, what? The roof? So, right. Anyway. Or or wood or ice. Right. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Pete got it. Pete, Pete's enough of an Easterner <laughs> to get it. Uh, yeah, so more Imperial, a sloppy Imperial discipline. They're in the middle of stealing this ship, and no one see, they don't seem to have any, uh, <laughs> like, urgency about we've got to get out of here. They're just like, hey, let's... Hang around, I'll stop and pick people up and uh and, and so on. So Well you you mentioned what are they lost? Pete the the, the cut character of their yes. of Beckett's Corso. team. Corso. Yeah. I have him for tomorrow. I was gonna talk about him because Okay. Because I'm curious about that because there's a line in this where I'm assuming that he was the the Strong muscle man. Yeah. Yeah. So they tomorrow they say uh Okay. Well we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was in this clip or tomorrow's clip where specifically it was mentioned. It's like, oh, well, that would make sense for the cut character to be yeah. the one they need to replace. Exactly. Um, but yes, uh, I have questions about how Rio's body was working. Because it, okay. I, and I guess is he? So is he? Like, with his hand out raised, is he human height? Yeah, like well, with with like uh, what what because he's what, puppeteering basically the head, right? With his one hand is one being arm the head, and then his other arms are being the arms. He's four foot eleven, right? What you're asking how tall? Well, so then, so he's got like a like a the helmet was sitting on top of where his head would be, right? The bottom of the helmet it, uh, with his upstretched arms. So like let's a, say like that brought him up to like five eight, five nine. Okay, because he's raising his arm up all the way to puppeteer. The helmet. So if he's four eleven, then you're adding on the arm length. That's she. she. Oh, it's a she. Katie Cartwheel. Well, the, oh no, the... I meant the character Rio. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about how. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were asking how they were doing the puppeteering. So no, I meant as far as bringing the character. Well, how is the itself. character doing puppeteering to present? How is the character successfully pulling off this? Oh, okay. Gimmick I when so, he's so much you, smaller. So you, so you have two legs. I do operating the legs. Uh huh. And then you have two arms, one operating each arm. Then mm-hmm. you have the one arm, the, your third arm doing the helmet. And then I guess the fourth arm was the one pulling the pants up. But, okay. As but, as he was walking, which is what Han notices. Right. But is that enough? So it's not like a, not like a, like a rig or anything, right? It's not like this, this mechanical no, suit it, that it he's had. Look- he's just like, like within this suit of, the suit of armor has enough structural integrity that he can just be in it and be actively walking around doing this stuff? I, I guess. Also, I wouldn't think his legs were that long to fill out the legs yeah. of and pull off being an actual 
This should you... have been part of the solo cross sections book where they would yeah. show you what he looked like underneath yeah. there. Holding exactly. The different. <laughs> I want that that little stuff. drawing of Jabba of the Jabba puppet with right. the you know with the all the people inside of it. I want that for Rio. Yeah. Well, now I'm. Curious. But not I'm with a... the person. I want. One where's my removed. Where's my pen? Come on, Alex. Let's let's figure this out. There's a T-shirt. <laughs> Can you figure out Rio in the in the the go. out in the stormtrooper outfit? <laughs> well, they. I'm just trying to get a sense of what he looks like. Like, can you see normally? his feet and stuff? Yeah, how long are his legs in the guide? In the book, he... Because that's the only part that is... He has the same proportions as a human, as a human. Mm. So right. it's not like he's... But I'm going to guess... There, it looks like his chest kind of sticks out a bit. I'm going to guess that's Rio's that's, real head. That's where there. his head is? Yeah. Hmm. What, what so page he can you look, look, he can look what at? What page are you looking at? I'm looking at... We're both looking at the... Uh, Right, the the official, official guide. guide. It's on page forty-seven. Is where you'll find Rio. For those of you reading get, along at home, reading along the gang. Um, Ding! Please turn but, to page um, forty-seven. Yeah, it, it. I start to wonder. I mean, I, we don't have to worry about it too much, but um, why? Why worry? Why worry? What me worry? <laughs> yeah, the legs part. The legs part is like you would think stilts. You'd have to be on stilts to pull off the. Right or length or of the legs, or at least like, like everything you know, else seems fine. Like everything else, I can I can buy. Sort of the arms down the arms and the, but yeah, the height with the legs seems to be an issue. Hmm. Although it is a smoky, dark, muddy planet with a lot of explosions going on, so people were four eleven, so we wouldn't need to add too much height yeah, to be a convincing yeah. human. And plus, you know, like if I was walking around and doing a thing and I had a suspicion that the guy that I was working with was really an alien in disguise, I don't Diamonds. think I would have said anything. Yeah. You know? Okay. So page 58, Alex, is what has Rio outside of the suit. If yeah. If you want to compare. Mm. So that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I can sort of see, I guess. Whatever. Movie magic. <laughs> Movie suspension magic. of disbelief. I do like that. There apparently, I I don't know where this is coming from, but there's the uh, uh maybe it's from the art of Solo, a Star Wars party. That there's uh concept. There's all kinds of cool conceptual art that we didn't get to see um actualized. You know, there's like Chewbacca wearing stormtrooper armor to a certain extent. Wow. But there's I got there because of the the. Some early designs for Rio that never really took off are very. Oh, you mean the some of them right look. Here? Some of those, yeah. Some of those. There's one that look. Oh, it might not even be those. I think there's other ones. For the viewer at ho- the listener at home, it is showing the art of Solo a Star Wars story. There's some other ones where he looks very ball like, and there's other ones where he looks very much like Rocket Raccoon. So it's a, it's an interesting. Yeah, well, he was we supposed go. to be like Wilfred Brimley at some point. Yeah, I wonder how how far they were going to lean into it. There was one. Oh, that's was that Lady. Oh yeah, there you go, there you go. I was like, no, wait, that's Lady Proxima, but no, at the so top, yeah, there's he's like, like a little backpack alien. Yeah, he looks almost yeah. like like uh, like a pill bug or from Monsters Inc. That guy, Mike. Sure. Um. Anyway, Rio, I have questions, but we'll, it's fine. <laughs> Rio, a Star Wars story, will answer I, all of those questions. I have a feeling Rio's going to be around for a long time, so we have yeah, plenty of time. To, <laughs> we have the time to talk about him later. Um, will we have plenty of time to talk uh, tomorrow about more of this? Um, can, can we? Can you come back tomorrow to finish up this? We'll finally talk about the muscle. We made it this far. I mean, mm-hmm. if I can come back, I would love to. And uh, there's a couple of things to talk about. Definitely, we, we get some scenery changes. We're, we're gonna there's there's things going on tomorrow. Um, well, I'm here if you that's are. That's very vague. <laughs> things. Oh will yeah, happen. tomorrow there's scene changes. <laughs> all sorts of things happen. Will things happen? Find out tomorrow in Star Wars. Star Wars Minute. Minute.